Hello and welcome to the quick start instruction video of the card game IT Startup. The goal is to give you a quick overview over the game and show you the gameplay and jump right in. The exact instruction manual can be found at playitstartup.com. You can also download the print and play prototype there. The game is currently released only in Poland. Only the Polish version is available to buy, but the English version should be available on Kickstarter by the beginning of, of next year, so 2020. In this example, we will show you a one versus one gameplay. The game can be played for up to four players or even more if you have the expansion pack or you can bind two games together and play to up to eight players. Uh, the basic game can be played uh, for up to four players at a time. And there's also an alternative gameplay when, when you, where you play two versus two. But let's jump right in in the one versus one gameplay. It's the simplest one, the easiest one to explain and understand. Before the game starts, we roll a die. The dice roll decides how many resources the players start with. Every player gets of course the same amount of resources, so we roll only once and every player gets the same amount. This random element ensures that the start of the game is every time a bit different. It's not only depending on the cards you've drawn, but also on the cards that you keep in your mulligan, so more resources is a faster start, less resources means a slower start. For our example, let's assume that we rolled 4, so every player gets 4 resource points. To make it a bit easier, we keep the resources on the corner of the screen. In the actual game, the resources are represented with chips in the game. If you are playing the print and play prototype, you can just use change from your pocket. Every player draws 5 cards, and we start the mulligan phase. For people who don't really play card games and don't know what a mulligan phase is, you decide what cards from your opening hand you want to keep and what cards you want to throw away and draw new ones. So for example, you can keep all of them, you can discard one and draw one new card, or you can even discard all of them and draw five new cards. But you can do it only once and only in the beginning of the game. In this case, I'm deciding to discard the intern card and for the one discarded card, I draw a new one. The same applies for every player, so every player draws 5 cards and every player has a mulligan phase, so they decide how many cards they want to keep, how, how many they want to discard, and for every discarded card they can draw uh, a new one. In the beginning, don't worry if you don't know what cards do you want to discard, you will learn it while playing the game. If you're just starting and playing the game for the first or second time, just watch out to have at least one or two employees in your opening hand. After a few games, you will learn what combination of cards are the best to keep. Now we start our first turn. Every turn starts with drawing a new card. Then we get resources. In the first turn, we get one resource point. In the second turn, two resource points and so on. The maximum amount of resources you get every turn is eight. Now for the fun part, so let's play the cards. I really like this wizard card, so let's play our QA wizard engineer. In the upper right corner we see the play cost of this card, so it's 3 resource points to play our QA wizard engineer. We had a total of 5 resource points, so now we have 2 resource points left. 2 resource points is not enough to play the next card, so for example this monster bug card. It's also not worth playing at the time, because our opponent has no employees in play. But with action cards we can do something else. We can of course play them in our turn and play the full full play cost uh, to play the card, but we can do something else. An action card can be planned. Planning an action card is just putting it face down on the table. We don't pay any resources for planning a card, we pay the resources when we turn it face up again. You can turn it face up in your next turn, so you can't plan a card and turn it face up immediately. Uh, when you do it on your next turn, the benefit is that you play one resource point less. So for example, this monster bug card normally costs 3 to play, but if you plan it the previous turn, on the next turn you can play it for 2 resource points. You don't have to play it on your next turn, it, it can stay face down and you can wait on which turn you want to play it, but it's important to remember that only one action card can be planned and you can plan a new action card only after you played the previous planned action card. Of course you can play another action card, but you have to play the full play cost. Let's decide to end our turn. We still have two resource points left that we could use to play another card, but we choose not to. They do not vanish, the resource points that we had left can be used on another turn. When we end our turn, every employee we control gets one burnout point. 
The burnout points on an employee are marked with red cubes. You can find the cubes in the box of the game or if you're playing the print and play prototype. Just use any other marker, really everything will do, like change from your pocket or bottle caps. An employee with three burnout points leaves play and returns to the bottom of the deck. The exception of this rule are employees that have burnout resistance. We see it in the upper left corner on this uh, on this shield. With an employee that has one burnout resistance leaves play with four burnout points. An employee with two burnout resistant points leaves the play when he has five burnout points. So they stay in play one or two turns longer. After we added the burnout on our employees, let's count project points. Let's name our players Pat and Matt. We have one developer in play, the developer's efficiency is two, so for this turn we get two project points. Now it's time for our opponent's turn. He draws a card and gets one resource point because it's the first turn. Our opponent decides that he has a great play for six resource points, but he currently only has five resources. But he can do something to change it. He decides to discard a card, the discarded card goes on the bottom of the deck, and for every discarded card this way, you get one resource point, so for discarding one card, you get one resource point. We can also draw extra cards, but then we pay two resource points. So for discarding a card, you get one extra resource point, and if you want to draw additional cards, you can pay two resource points to draw an additional card. The key to winning an IT startup is resource management. You have to figure out how to get the most points for less resources or how to use your cards to sabotage your opponent efficiently. Our opponent decides to play the copy-paste developer. When this card is played, our other developers get one burnout point. But our opponent currently has no other developers, so it was a smart play to play this card first, so the drawback of this card, the negative when played trigger, does not affect any other developers, because our opponent has currently no other developers in play. Playing this card costs our opponent one resource point. The other five remaining resources he's using to play this lead developer card. Now our opponent decides to end the turn, so every employee gets one burnout point. Now it's time for the project points. Matt has two developers, one with efficiency 2, one with efficiency 5, so for this turn he gets seven project points. It's time for our second turn, so we draw a card, and because it's the second turn, we get two resource points. To make it easier to remember which turn it is, it's a good idea to write the points down just like that. And now we see that we played our first turn, Pat has two points, Matt has seven points, and the next turn is turn number two. We decide to use our planned action card, so we turn it face up, and we play it for only two resource points, not for the full play cost of three, because we planned it the previous turn, so we save one resource point for planning it the turn earlier. So we have to remember that action cards can be planned, but they have to be planned one turn earlier to be played for one resource point less, so we can't just put it face down and immediately put it face up and play it for one resource point less. Also you have to remember that only action cards can be planned, and there can be only one action card planned at a time, so you can't have two planned action cards. If you want to plan another action card, the previous planned card has to be played. You can of course play action cards from your hand, but then you have to pay the full play cost. So we activate our previously planned action card, we pay two resource points instead of three, because we planned it a turn earlier, and the written text on the action card applies. So for the monster bug, all opponent's employees get one burnout point. The action card that we used gets back on the bottom of the deck. Now we think about playing Downer Dave. It looks like a great play, because he could give our opponent's lead developer the third burnout point to make him leave play. We have only two resource points, and Downer Dave normally costs three resource points, but we have a card in play, QA Wizard Engineer, that has the while in play effect, your developers cost one less. So it's great, we can play Downer Day for two resources instead of three because of the while in play effect of the QA Wizard Engineer. The one played effect of our Downer Day gives one of our opponent's employees one extra burnout point, so we can use it to give the lead developer his third burnout point and make him leave play. Our opponent's lead developer leaves play and returns to the bottom of the deck. We don't have any resources anymore, but we have this fancy investor card that gives us two additional resource points. Now we are deciding to play a knowledge card. We play defensive programming for one resource point to boost our downer Dave, so his efficiency is now 1 plus 2. Now we are ending our turn, so it's time for the burnout points again. 
Then it's time for project points. The efficiency of our developers is 5, we add the 2 points from the previous turn. So after our second turn, we have 7 project points. It's time for our opponent's turn. It's his second turn, so he gets 2 resource points. He draws a card and decides to play the Ambitious Apprentice card. This developer has 0 efficiency, but it's easier to play knowledge cards on him. The cost of this card was 1 resource point, the opponent has 1 resource point left, and wants to play the Domain Knowledge Knowledge card. Normally this card would cost 3 resource points to play, but because of the text on the Ambitious Apprentice we can play it for 1 resource point, so we boost our Ambitious Apprentice from 0 efficiency to 4 efficiency for only 1 resource point. Our opponent ends his turn, so his employees get 1 burnout point. Before the copy-paste developer leaves play, we get the project points for him. Matt's developers have 6 efficiency, he had 7 points from his previous turn, so 6 plus 7 adds up to 13. The copy-paste developer card has 3 burnout points, so he leaves play and gets to the bottom of the deck. We continue the game until one of the players finishes his project. Finishing the project means, depending on the goal of the game, getting to 32 points if you want to play a fast game, getting to 64 points if you want to play a standard game, or getting to 128 points if you want to play a long game. You can choose the project target depending on how much time you have or which game type you prefer. It's very important to remember that every player has to play the same amount of turns before we check the win condition. Let's assume that we play a short game, so the goal is to get to 32 points. So if player Pat reached 33 points in his turn, then Matt also has to play his turn and the win condition is checked when every player played the same amount of turns. So if Matt finishes his turn with 29 points, then Pat wins because he has reached the project goal and he has more points than Matt. If Matt reaches the project goal and has more points than Pat, then Matt wins. If Matt reaches the same amount of points, then we play another turn. That's all for the quick start into IT start of the card game. I hope you get the idea that you learned something how to, how to play this game. If you want to check it out for yourself, if you want to download the print and play prototype, just go to playitstartup.com, there you can find the print and play prototype. And if you want to buy the game, by the beginning of 2020, in the first quarter, we're planning a Kickstarter to, to publish the game, uh, together with another game from one of our friends, uh, our friend Konrad Kokosa is also publishing his game uh, out of memory, the game. It's a card game about building .NET applications, so if you're more into uh, .NET development and not really the startup world, then check out playoutofmemory.com. We're planning to join our forces and publish our card games as one company. So if you want a bundle of uh, two games at the beginning of 2020 on Kickstarter, you can do that, or you can back just one of them. Uh, for now, check out the print and play prototype at playitstarter.com. And in the first quarter of 2020, uh, we will inform you about the Kickstarter launch. Have fun and take care.